Now, the story of a chef who's working to reintroduce Native American culinary traditions that existed long before Europeans arrived. Special correspondent Fred DeSam Lazaro reports from Minnesota. It's part of his series, Agents for Change. The celebration begins with well-known native rituals. But organizers at this American Indian Community Center want to draw attention to the long-forgotten native culinary heritage. Because indigenous peoples had to be resourceful. Taking center stage was Sean Sherman, a chef better known by his brand, Sioux Chef, as an S-I-O-U-X. So there's some dandelion, there's three different kinds of mushrooms. We have patty pan squash that actually we grew in our garden. He uses native ingredients common to the Americas for hundreds of years before white settlers arrived. Part of our challenge to ourselves was to cut out colonial ingredients, so we stopped using dairy, wheat flour, cane sugar. For Chef Sherman, it is also a way to push back against processed foods that he and others blame for grave health consequences in the U.S. today. The foods that all of us are eating today, most of us are eating today, are killing us. You know, they are the sources of our diabetes, our chronic disease, our cardiovascular disease. Native people have known how to grow and harvest food for a very long time. Mary Owen is a professor of medicine who also practices at a nearby reservation. She says poor diets are linked to two leading causes of death among Native Americans, cancer and heart disease. Native people in this state die 10 years um, sooner than non-natives or white folks, actually. 45-year-old Sean Sherman grew up poor in the Black Hills on the remote Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota and began his career in Minneapolis, working for years in restaurants where he learned various cuisines. Just all of a sudden re I realized like there was no native food, so I just realized the utter absence of indigenous uh, perspective anywhere in the culinary world. Nothing that represented the land we were actually standing on. You want me to write this too? He set out to change that, researching ancestral food systems and compiling it all into a book. The Sioux Chef's Indigenous Kitchen won the 2018 James Beard Award for Best American Cookbook. What were my Lakota ancestors eating and storing away? How are they getting oils and salts and fats and sugars and things like that? So it took me quite a few years of just researching, but it really became a passion. And we have all these beautiful ingredients around us. With his business and life partner, Dana Thompson, he travels around the world to promote healthier and traditional diets, appearing at events like the Duluth Food Expo. Here, traditionally harvested wild rice is added to the medley dished out in samples. Well, it's very different from the things that I normally eat. It was really fresh. Um, it kind of tasted like earth. It was absolutely phenomenal to think that you could put dandelion in a food and have it taste amazing. There's no argument that fresh organic ingredients like these on display are good for you. There were demonstrations at the Food Expo of how they can be turned into delicious dishes. The problem for many people, especially living in native communities, is affordability and access near where they live between the, the cost of putting them together and the time that it takes to prepare them, that is more costly for so many. You know, there is a huge problem of poverty in our community. People are working more than one job oftentimes. They come home and they're tired. Fresh foods and produce are scarce on reservations, particularly rural ones, where many people rely on convenience stores for their groceries. Sherman and Thompson want to tackle the challenge of these so-called food deserts. Even if we could just get some of those gas stations to just have one section, one shelf of healthy indigenous options to choose from, you know, just take away one big uh, shelf of chips, right? Isn't it true that those chips would be a lot cheaper than the healthier options that might replace them? It's cheaper on the front end. If you look at the costs of treating all of those foodborne illnesses, it, it, it wipes that, that price of the chips right out. There is a cheaper option, they say foraging. People can just go into their backyard. We tag along at an organic farm and garden run by the Shakopee Midwakanton Sioux tribe near Minneapolis as Sherman and Thompson pick berries, plums, sunchokes, wild herbs and greens. Well, we had some cedar, we have some hyssop and some bergamot. Back in a kitchen in St. Paul they whip up a delicious dish with the ingredients they gathered plus a few staples like wild rice. It's like autumn on a plate. Mm. 
Mm. That is unlike anything I have ever tasted in my life. Yeah, man. You know, like around here, you can't get more Minnesotan than those foods because they've been here longer than Minnesota was a concept. So. Most of the sous chef's income today comes from a catering business. They plan to open a non-profit kitchen to train native chefs next year and later open their first restaurant. For the PBS NewsHour, this is Fred DeSam Lazaro reporting on and eating off the land in St. Paul, Minnesota. And Fred's reporting is a partnership with the Undertold Stories Project at the University of St. Thomas in Minnesota.